That all sounds so strange to us, doesn't it? Apocalyptic literature is um, not often found in the Gospels, but it is always the text for this Sunday. It is about what may happen and who will know what is going to happen. But the most important word from this scripture, I believe, is this. Salvation is near. Salvation is near. That is the overwhelming word for the first Sunday of Advent. Admittedly, that word comes from very strange words in the text and some troubling images like a flood, which causes utter devastation and death. Or two people working in a field, one of them taken away and one left behind. Or two women grinding meal together, one taken away and another left behind. This is the stuff of movies, isn't it? It is true. It is true that judgment will surely come. Judgment will come to all of God's people. And the judge, the judge is the one who came to live and die for us. The judge is the one who will come in glory for us once again. The judge is the one who knows us best and loves us most. The judge is the one who came to save the whole world. It is he who will be the judge. Salvation is near. Salvation is near. We remind ourselves of that over and over again. In baptism, we say to the child or to the adult, for you, for you, Jesus is surely coming again. Whenever we use the Apostles' a Creed to affirm our faith, we say, I believe in Jesus Christ who will come to judge, who will come to judge the quick and the dead. He will come to judge the living and the dead. Salvation is near. God's radical claim on our life will be made fully, will be fully revealed when Jesus Christ comes again, and it is for him that we watch. It is for him that we wait. All of Christendom affirms that Jesus will come again, that salvation is near. Some of our Christian brothers and sisters use this as threat. Other Christian traditions like ours use this as promise. Jesus is coming again. But we've been waiting for a long time, haven't we? We've been waiting for a very long time. We have been waiting for so long that our eyes have dimmed. We have been waiting so long that we have grown distracted. We have been waiting so long that our hearts have hardened. And so the images in Scripture do not really ring true for us. But salvation is near. That is the promise of Scripture for us, for all times. Like the, woman, gr like the women who were grinding meal together, and like the field hands who were working together, 
we know that when Jesus comes again, he will take us to himself. In the ordinariness of our lives, whether it is grinding at meal or working in the fields, whether it is the work of teaching, whether it is the work of caring for others, when we grieve, when we are anxious, when we pray, when we play, when we are heartbroken, when we care for a loved one, when we are heartbroken, when we are afraid of what we see and also of what we cannot see, when we are busy caring for the sick, in the ordinariness of our lives, Christ will come again. In the things that we do every day and the things that we only sometimes do, in whatever is ordinary about our lives, there are glimpses of holiness. We may not always see the Christ in what we do, we may not always see the Christ in the places where we live and work. But the fact is, the living Christ is with us, claiming us and calling us and holding us. Just as Rebecca said to the children, this is a time. These four weeks are a time, perhaps, for us to pay attention to pay attention in, we, in a way we don't all, always pay attention. Perhaps it is a time for us to be more alert to the divine in our midst. Perhaps it is a time for us truly to look and to see what God has done for us. It is true that we often see that for which we are looking, and we do not see what we are not looking for. So my challenge for all of us in these four Advent weeks is for us to keep our eyes open, to spend these weeks looking for the holy, Spend these four weeks looking for the holy, looking for the divine presence wherever we are, whatever we are doing. Perhaps we will see the divine light in the eyes of someone who struggles. Or maybe we will see the divine in the touch of a neighbor's hand. Perhaps we will see the divine working in our reading, in our praying, in our singing. But I urge you, in the midst of baking and wrapping and shopping and decorating and all the things that stand in front of us, I urge you to look for the divine. Perhaps when you are choosing your Christmas tree, you will recognize the divine in someone with you or someone you meet. Perhaps you will see the divine light in someone when you deliver a plate of cookies. But my friend, as we prepare as we prepare our hearts and our minds and our lives and even our bodies for the coming once again of Jesus Christ, I urge you to remember that our salvation is near, that the God who created us is with us, will always be with us, and aches for us to recognize him in our own lives. Perhaps we need to focus. 
Perhaps we need to refocus, to be still and know the God of our lives. It can be a busy time, a very busy time. But will you also use the Advent season to pay careful attention to what God is doing in your midst? Amen.